Welcome to part two of our three-part series on I left the cult, but is the cult still in me? Today, we're going to talk about shame. Shame is another monkey on our back when we leave our respective cult. I was a member of the International Church of Christ cult, or ICOC, for 11 years. And even after 11 years of being out, shame is something I still struggle with in varying degrees. It is a lesser degree than I did 10, 11 years ago because time and personal development has helped me to overcome a lot of things, but it's still there at times. Let's talk about this. Number one, let's lay the groundwork and say, do not be ashamed of still struggling with shame. Um, there's this shame that we feel as cult survivors that we should be over it already. Why am I still struggling with this? Why can't I get over it already? That is probably the biggest aspect of shame that we suffer from because we feel as if it, it, it wasn't a big deal or it really is hard because when you go through spiritual abuse, the world doesn't have a lot of sympathy, compassion, or empathy for you. You usually are blamed for you know what happened to you in some shape or form I'm told there are good churches out there don't give up on God there is a rolodex of responses and treatments that that you get um, none of which are healthy and, and, and appropriate because people uh, have a stake in believing what they believe in in you speaking out about your spiritual abuse rocks their whole uh, world and and how they see things. So they're going to defend that before they acknowledge what happened to us. So that's first things first is not allowing us to be ashamed of being shame. The second part of that is is also there is a deep shame of having been in a cult in the first place. And I would struggle with that majorly when I first left. And I will say there was enough blame to go around on that because a lot of the shame that was being leveled at me came from so-called professionals. You know, I tried to get professional help and I didn't really have the money for a full-blown psychologist, but I, I, I had some resources I tried to utilize. And, and a lot of the shaming tactics came from people who were supposedly had all these degrees in the wall and in and, and psychology and, and licensing to therapists. So I will say that it didn't just come from in my head that it came from other sources as well to confirm that why did I join in the first place? Like, what are you stupid kind of thing? And of course, no one said that outright, but that was what they were implying when they say, well, why did you join something like that in the first place? You know, they're saying, what's wrong with you? Were you, were you stupid? You know, and you hear people say, I would never fall for something like that. I would have been like this or that and so that um embeds a lot of shame in us we feel stupid we feel fooled we feel like why did i waste all these years of my life in this particular group what is wrong with me i feel so so foolish and that's why i kept quiet for such a long time because i was ashamed and i felt so so dumb and, and so uh, stupid that I allowed the 
the teachings of this particular group I was in, um, that I believed and bought into this, that I dedicated my life to this. That's a second level of shame that we carry with us. That we, and it oftentimes it keeps us from getting help. It keeps us from speaking out because although I did have some professionals that were not um, understanding and professional about it, there are, peop there are people that are. And um, the one that I have right now, the therapist I have right now is really good. And that there are others that may be better than even her. So I think in terms of, not in terms of being a therapist, but in terms of um, knowledge of specializing with spiritual trauma. But I have a really good therapist. So it is possible. It took me a very long time, though, to find. But uh, the thing of it is, is that's what keeps kept me silent is if I open up about this that I'm going to be ridiculed and looked at as a fool and and looked down upon as a crazy person as an insane person because there's such a stigma with cults there's such a stigma where when you say the word cult people automatically run to David Koresh and the children of God and 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 these these crazy harems and and living in the middle of the jungle drinking poison kool-aid so what i would say is educate yourself on cults and that's part of why i do what i do on this channel is to educate people on cults and from an intellectual standpoint but also just knowledge is power you know, and, and in the cult, knowledge is seen as weakness. And in the ICOC cult, we were, a uh, knowledge uh, external of what they taught us w was given the title of spiritual pornography. You know, to, to shut our thinking down and to keep us from looking up the ICOC on the internet. And, well, back then it wasn't really the internet back then. It was just starting to come out. But for looking outside for information and, and learn, you know, and, and, and just thinking critically is to shut down your critical thinking skills. So shame is one of those things that is used to shut your critical thinking skills down so you won't question things. So knowledge is power. And, and how I fought shame was getting knowledge, getting knowledge on what a cult was getting knowledge on on shame and, and knowledge on um, what spiritual abuse is and, and trauma and PTSD because the more you understand about these things you the more you'll understand about what happened to you and the less shame you will feel I mean that's for me that's what happened I can't guarantee that for you but Typically, I feel it's safe to make that statement, the, the claim that chances are your shame will decrease exponentially when you understand what really took place and happened to you, that you were not just some stupid little person, an idiot that was following, following somebody like a zombie. A lot of times that's not what, what happened. And some of you were born into the cults your parents were, were devoted cult members and so you were raised in it or if you're like me you were brought into it when you were a, a kid you know a teenager uh so you know and maybe others if you were older you had some trauma that you had dealt with and you were just extremely vulnerable but when you understand that that's how cults get you when you understand these things, then the shame will, the power of shame will, will weaken on your life and in your mind. Because, you know, the sh it comes, a lot of times shame comes from ignorance and, and let's discuss the second thing, right? Shaming, what makes shaming so powerful is that 
you will be rejected by other people. And let's face it, we're, we're social creatures. We need love from one another. We need family and community in some way. Even if it's not our, our physical, biological family, we need family and, and connection in our lives. It doesn't matter if we're male or female, what our skin color is, what our ethnicity is. We need connection. It's how we're made. And so when people shame us, it cuts us off from that connection. It threatens us from that connection. And many times, you know, there is this, like what I have a video on fear in this series where shame and fear are intric intricately connected. And a lot of times our fear of being alone, our fear of being isolated um, takes us from, um, like it makes shame work on us because we're, we're afraid that people will reject us. So the, the second way I would say that I've combated shame and decreased it in my life because I'm still, it crops up here and there in certain areas because it's like, you know, there's just things that will happen or, or I'll be thinking something or feeling something. And, and I realize well, that comes from a place of shame. So it's a work in progress, but I will say without a doubt that I am not the person that I was 10 years ago or even one year ago in terms of a lot of things, but shame being one of them that, you know, I don't, I don't let now in my life, shame cannot force me to do something, to jump through a hoop or to uh, compromise my principles for something. And in the cult, a lot of us, if we're honest, we compromised our principles in some respect. Some of us prefer to think we were the maverick and we did whatever we wanted to do, but that does not work if you're in the cult. It, you may have done certain things you wanted to do. We all did, you know, but in some way, you know. But at the same time, there were some basic things you had to compromise on to be a member. So when we're honest about that, we realize that, you know, when you, when you, when you quote unquote overcome shame and the people can't use shaming tactics to get you to do what they want you to do. And I'll say that the underlying um, foundation to being shame free has to be self love and self esteem. And that may sound hokey and corny or just very cliche, right? But a lot of times cliches are true. It's just truth that you get tired of people repeating over and over again, but it doesn't change the fact that it's true. And when you have a, a high level of self appreciation for your, you know, for you and you value yourself that you are not going to allow other people to devalue you and shame you into believing something that you don't believe or doing something that you don't do just to be accepted. That being alone is okay. That you don't, you'd rather be alone than to have fake friends, just like your cult friends for the most part are, are fake and and I know some people say they still have friends in the cult and we can debate that on another day, but whatever the case may be, you'd rather be alone than to be with people who truly don't have your best interest at heart. And that takes building your, your love for yourself and your self-esteem and and that's going to take putting down, um, like in, in my, my video on fear, putting down those fears of yourself that are embedded deep within by the cult and religion also. 
you know, that you're not good enough, that you are inherently corrupt and evil. But it will also take uh, building yourself up and knowing that you are worthy, that you are uh, deserving of, of all good things, that you are not inherently evil that you are someone that um, you deserve to be loved and, and treated well and, and, and to have your dreams, you know, realized in your life that, and let me, let me uh, put a pin in that for a second. A big area of shame that, that we suffer with is having dreams and, and having desires. So there's this moral aspect to this. Um, I know that you know, sexuality is a big area of shame. And for me, it, it, it was extremely pushed in the ICOC, you know, that everything, this is impure. If you wore this particular blouse, this was impure. If you had impure thoughts about, you know, if I had impure thoughts, quote unquote, about this guy, then I had to confess. And so there is this level of shame where, you, you know, because we had something called a discipling partner, which is someone that we had to report to and confess our sins to. Uh, someone supposedly that was a big brother or sister in the faith, but in reality, it was someone who was more of a, a handler who was assigned to uh, keep us in line uh, by the leaders of that particular church. So we had to confess anything that was shameful to our discipling partner and get it out in the open and so that builds a lot of the shame of our sexuality of our thoughts and the things we think and and we judge ourselves so harshly on everything we think everything we do beyond the general moral scope of of right and wrong but beyond that into we just um we really feel on some level i had to realize i felt like i was a, a horrible person to some degree because you know i was not perfect i was doing i was having this thought and you know i felt sexual desire uh and i'm not married or masturbation or you know so all these things bring shame because of the teachings that were ingrained in us and a big way i counteract that is building up my internal self-esteem and 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 self-confidence and and i do that i'm really big on on treating myself well you know taking care of myself if I if I'm sick which I am a lot to love myself enough to step back and, and, and rest you know to to try to be aware when I'm beating myself up for making a mistake uh, maybe it's the same old thing like getting getting uh, my hair done or or just going out um, for a drive when I need a break but doing something for myself and that it's okay to enjoy life and to appreciate life because we have so much shame that we cannot be happy and that it is okay for us to be happy and so when we get that revelation then a lot of the shame that uh, is we carry around with us after leaving the cult will begin to evaporate okay well that's it for now um, please uh, like the video comment subscribe and um, I will see you in part three